We're at the 10th workshop on adverse drug reactions and lipodystrophy in London, England, uh, with Esteban Martinez, who is with the hospital clinic in Barcelona, Spain. At the end of your, your presentation, uh, it was about the, um, the, life, the issue around uh, the intermittent therapy. Yeah. And you said, maybe we, re we need to reinvestigate and rethink. Yes, we need to rethink, but, but how? And, and especially for reasons of lipodystrophy and yeah. lipoatrophy. Yeah. So give us the setup on your presentation. Well, uh, you know that uh, antiretroviral therapy has changed the uh, history of uh, HIV-infected people, but uh, it has also brought a lot of problems. Uh, some of them, uh, though uh, antiretroviral therapy has been changing, uh, the problems uh, uh, from the past still may remain, and that may be true for a substantial proportion of people. So, um, at uh, a time when the uh, um, strategies of using uh, potent antiretroviral therapy were not completely um, um, uh, as well known as uh, today. We designed a, a, a study in which uh, the patients with the problem of lipotrophy were uh, randomized to either switch from timidine analogs to non-timidine analogs but keeping the medication as, as usual. Mm -hmm. Uh, I mean, uh, getting uh, suppressed by the load and uh, uh, taking uh, the medications as uh, expected, etc. And the other group of, of patients, two groups of patients, were randomized to uh, discontinue therapy guided either by CD4 cell counts, as in the SMART study, but with a low, uh, higher, higher threshold, yeah, and uh, also to discontinue therapy guided by viral load. And we took the points of uh, CD4 cell counts and viral load uh, levels to uh, discontinue therapy that were recommended at that time to initiate antiretroviral therapy. So we were going to test if uh, just uh, changing timidine analogs or taking off uh, antiretroviral therapy as a whole uh, would be equally safe and uh, efficient for the primary endpoint that was lipotrophy and for the rest of uh, health. And uh, we were able to see that um, in our study as uh, performing this way, uh, the interruption of therapy was not um, uh, um, as bad as uh, one can think in the, in the, from the SMART study. Because I, you had the numbers, you were working with higher... Well, beca because of, of several things, the number of patients in our study was small. It, it was power to detect changes in lean fat, not uh, changes in health or uh, any other problems. But uh, still, the number of patients experiencing uh, problems directly from the interruption of therapy was very small about, uh, let's say, 4 or 5% of the patients having problems such as acute, anti -retro uh, acute retroviral syndrome or um, um, uh, acute psoriasis or acute uh, thrombocytopenia that were, were problems that the patients had presented in the past when were uh, diagnosed of HIV infection by the first time. So no patient died, there was nothing irreversible and those patients, those, uh, the, the small number of patients experiencing uh, uh, adverse effects with the interruption of therapy were able to resume these uh, effects after uh, initiating uh, antiretroviral therapy again. Well, at least from the point of safety, um, that was the case in, in clinical terms. It is true, I have not mentioned uh, it in the, in the study, that those patients without therapy uh, had a decrease in CD4 cell counts over time and that decrease in CD4 cell counts over time, although maybe we gain uh, after uh, reinitiating therapy once the study uh, um, uh, was finished, uh, the patients uh, had had a, a very slow recovery in, in CD4 cell counts. But still, the clinical problems and the recovery of, of uh, the clinical problems are absent, and the recovery of CD4 cell counts, though slow, exists. Uh, our principal issue was to see if the, the, the recovery of lean fat in those patients with clinical lipotrophy was better with one or with the other options, continuous therapy or uh, both intermittent uh, anti, uh, discontinuation, uh, intermittent strategies. And we were able to see that both uh, uh, intermittent strategies were far much better in terms of gaining fat than continuing uh, antiretroviral therapy. Mm, 
the, the gain in lean fat was much higher in, um, or at least uh, higher in the, in the arm uh, guided through uh, CD4 cell counts. And that was in relation with a longer uh, uh, period of therapy in uh, those patients, in this group of patients, uh, which uh, at least in a consistent way um, explains that uh, being of therapy uh, and the longer on, uh, being of therapy is associated with a higher lean fat increase. The, the, um, these findings, in the light of uh, current uh, knowledge, um, cannot, be, uh, cannot overcome the recommendations of continuous uh, antiretroviral therapy, because we know from different studies, the SMART, one of them, so the design is not uh, uh, similar, uh, at least in, in, the, in the level of uh, CD fossil counts to reintroduce therapy, that, that's a very important point. But from some other studies, we know that uh, having uh, the virus uh, replicating in your body is not good, not only for uh, HIV uh, directly related problems, such as immune deficiency or problems with opportunistic diseases, but also for global health. We know from different studies, again the, the SMART study, that there is an increase in uh, inflammatory uh, cytokines, in inflammatory molecules that may um, 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 influence uh, different kinds of problems uh, all over the body, health, uh, cardiovascular problems, kidney problems, uh, liver problems, and therefore it's n n no recommended to, to, to keep the virus uh, replicating. However, our results uh, suggest that um, the recovery of lean fat with switching from timidine analogs to non-timidine analogs may not uh, evidence the whole potential for recovery in lean fat with uh, other strategies. And uh, though maintaining antiretroviral therapy, we think uh, that our results should uh, at least uh, found the, the, the give, give the fundamentals to, to further study if with other kinds of uh, antiretroviral uh, strategies we are able to give a better response for those patients that are still uh, lipotrophic. And this gives us more uh, of an opportunity to, for others who watch this, of course, who are in research, yeah. to think about this as a concept, not just uh, immediately discount the possibility of, of yeah, this again. Yeah, you're right. But for the patient's perspective, this is, we're not there yet. This is, this is the beginnings of uh, opening maybe a door yeah. that can take an another yeah. look. And yet a very important question that we've, we've pondered for years. You are completely right. Uh, we all want uh, things uh, completely settled up when uh, we need them. And uh, the movement of uh, um, the development of, uh, of science and the, the translation of science into uh, real practice is not um, uh, coming uh, all together, is not coming uh, in a prompt way. It comes uh, slowly, taking a piece of uh, there, a piece of here, yes. and uh, you have to filter all those pieces to, to confirm them with other independent studies, and uh, that's why uh, science and, and, uh, and uh, well, uh, global uh, uh, human being uh, progresses. So um, I think that uh, there are uh, the, the, the most important uh, light in, in our study is that the, the potential for fat recovery, for lean fat recovery, is uh, potentially much more than that seen in a study switching uh, from uh, timidine to non-timidine analogs. And, and you, you've said that before. I mean, we, we, this, when, anytime you ask a question, which is what we do in research, you get 20 you get one answer and 20 more questions. You're right. And, but this is what we hope you've provoked at this point, the opportunity yeah. for others to think about this. 